Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube. So in today's video, we'll be recapping on all the events and the overall story of the Desert Diner Pizzeria. So we'll be recapping on all the characters' gameplay mechanics, locations, backstories, and all that good stuff as well. As always, I will just state that everything I say in these videos isn't necessarily linked to the overall universe and lore of FNAF. This is just a fun what-if scenario and a cool creepy story we get to tell, and I hope you enjoy. And lastly, do be sure to subscribe to GameTube, it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Alrighty, well, let's recap on the story of the Desert Diner Pizzeria. So now we arrive at our newest pizzeria location in the FNAF character concept series. And this brand new pizzeria is the Desert Diner Pizzeria. This, of course, was a desert themed pizzeria. We have a number of desert themed attractions and characters. In the long line of Freddy Fazbear establishments, out of all of them, the Desert Diner was their newest location. With all their attractions and fun activities, the pizzeria would be seeing happy guests enter for quite some time. But it wasn't always fun and happy times at the Desert Diner Pizzeria. There's been claims of mysterious injuries, rogue animatronics causing mayhem, and overall bizarre activity happening throughout. A little while ago, there was some strange and bizarre footage that leaked onto a popular streaming website. Only a few thousand people saw these videos until they were taken down. For now, let's take a look at our first character at the Desert Diner Pizzeria. And this character is Cory the Camel. So, hence the name, Cory was designed after the desert dwelling animal, the camel. Cory was given a yellow colour scheme, with a tuft of brown fur atop his head. He also has a large hump on his back, but considering the character is always facing the audience, guests would rarely see it. So, Cory's role up on stage was that of the main singer. He would sing all his jolly birthday songs up on stage next to all the other characters. They were a hit with all the kids and did their job entertaining all of them. But eventually, like all other Fazbear Entertainment characters, things would soon enough take a terrible turn for the worst. So besides performing up on stage, Cory was also in charge of the Sand Room. This room was a large indoor sand pit where all the children would play. So let's get into the unfortunate incident that happened to poor Cory the Camel. So at one point in the Desert Diner's history, they had a little more guests than they would like. The pizzeria experienced an outbreak of insects and vermin. It got to the point where the restaurant had to shut down for a whole month. The whole place was fumigated, and covered with a large makeshift tent to keep everything contained in the building. All the animatronics were put on charge in their respective areas. If a constant flow of power was supplied, then their inner workings would be fine. The restaurant was told the poison wouldn't affect the machines, but the poison wasn't the problem. The problem was in fact the moisture. And out of all the rooms, the sand room got sprayed the most. After the night guard was done for the day, they said goodbye and wouldn't see them all until a whole month later. The next day, all the moisture from the poison crept into Cory's inner workings. His body started to spark. Then it started to violently move and twitch. He fell on the floor as his body jolted and twitched all over the sand. And since he had a constant supply of power the whole time, he would continue to move in this manner for a whole month. A whole month of twitching and jolting on the abrasive sand would do a number on Corey's body. All of the material on his neck withered away, and most of the material on his arm slowly degraded as well. The violent jerking motion of his head forced his eye to be dislodged. When the staff eventually reopened the store, they were shocked and stunned at what they saw. They didn't know what they were going to do with the poor withered animatronic. But for the time being, they would need to put Cory in out of order. In all of that time, they had changed. In that long month, a lot of strange things happened. The only thing that was abnormal was Cory's obsession with getting his revenge on the night guard. Tonight would be the night he would make his move. Whilst they were sitting in the security office, that's when Cory would get them. So, like we stated, Cory's starting position would always be in the sand room. Once he's made his move, the player would have to track his movements on the security camera. Cory will always enter from the left hand side. As soon as the player sees him appear, they would need to close the door immediately. So, Cory's main tactic would be to appear when you're looking at the cameras or the motion tracker. And when you stop looking at the cameras, that's when he'll strike. But Cory is one of the more simplistic characters to deal with. The time he takes to enter the room in the first couple of nights is considerably slow. 
Hopefully they make it in time, but if not, they'll get greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. With a new night shift comes a new character, and this new character is Scott the Scorpion. Scott's design was quite unique to all his other animatronic brothers and sisters. For hands, he was given the unique scorpion pincers, and a fully operational and functional tail on the back of his body. So Scott's role up on stage was that of the xylophone player. He would perform up on stage next to Corey as they sing their happy birthday songs to all the guests. When Scott wasn't performing up on stage, he would be down in the main party area playing a game of Catch the Tail. All the children tried their best to catch his moving tail, but of course Scott was way too fast for the small children. So overall, the pizzeria deemed Scott to be quite the successful character. But eventually, as is the fate of most characters at Fazbear Entertainment, all of this would change for the worst. Scott would be located in the Desert Critters showroom. The Desert Critters showroom was an educational showcase that taught the children all about the bugs and insects that live in the desert. Whilst all the guests walked around and looked at all the preserved insects, Scott would also stand in the center of the room and recite random facts about all the bugs. So not much is known about what exactly happened to Scott. Many have theorized what could have happened, but no one knows for sure. The most likely theory was that a crazed fan managed to sneak into the pizzeria on the month it was being fumigated. It's also likely that it was the same person who snuck in and recorded that mysterious leaked footage. The night guard also thinks that it was this crazed fan that must have also attacked Scott while he was charging inside the Desert Critters showroom. Most of the fabric from his legs has been torn away, along with the fabric on his pincer claws and mouth and tail as well. Across his stomach was a large tear. No one was able to find the missing fabric anywhere on the pizzeria premises. It's almost like someone ripped it off Scott's body and stole it. Ever since the mysterious incident, Scott has never been the same. Their friendly appearance has now turned into something quite frightening. So here and there before their shift starts, they would check on Scott. They seemed fine for the time being. The only thing that was odd was the gash on their stomach. It seemed to be getting larger as time went on, but it must have been just their imagination. Anyways, the night guard continued on with their shift and then went home in the early morning. But on the next night, that's when things would get quite strange. He would make his way to the security office and hunt down the night guard. Scott didn't know why, he just felt compelled to do so. So Scott would approach the security office from the right hand side door. His starting location would always be in the Desert Critter showroom. He would make his move around 2 o'clock. As soon as the player sees Scott in the doorway, they would need to shut the door immediately. The player also needs to look out for the vent as Scott would fish his tail through the vent and try to sting the player. Being an animatronic, Scott didn't have any poison inside of this stinger, but being a sharp pointy metal object, it would be painful nonetheless. But the attempts that Scott makes would be the last of the player's problems. What they need to look out for is accidentally falling asleep. When the night guard gets too tired and dozes off, they'll begin to close their eyes. As their eyes shut, they open up again and find themselves in a nightmarish looking office. In this dreamlike realm, Nightmare Scott will appear. He can be seen with sharp jagged teeth, yellow staring eyes, and the gash across his stomach has turned into a nightmarish mouth with dark dripping saliva. In this nightmare mode, Scott is far more dangerous. His movement will become much faster, and he'll be able to access both doors. The only thing is, in this nightmare mode, the doors don't work. So the nightmarish Scott can wander in and stand right in front of the player. The player only has a short amount of time to quickly button mash and make them blink. The more times they blink, the faster they will wake up. But if they can't keep up with the rhythm, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So now let's meet our next desert themed character. And the next character we're introducing is Randy the Rattlesnake. Randy was of course modelled after the deadly desert serpent, the Rattlesnake. Hence the name, rattlesnakes were most famous for their rattle on their tail. Randy had his own rattle and it would work exactly like the real rattlesnake would. So Randy's role up on stage was that of the Maraca player. 
they would hold a maraca in each hand, and it also used their tail as an instrument as well. So before we get into Randy's incidents, let's first take a look at his other role at the pizzeria. So Randy was associated with the Desert Dessert Bar. This was a section of the pizzeria that was solely devoted to desserts. Seeing that desert and dessert were a fun play on words, the manager thought it would fit right in at the pizzeria. Randy would stand behind the counter as the children and other guests helped themselves to the ice cream. Every time one of the guests would get their ice cream cone, Randy would rattle his tail. Randy's rattle had to be one of his most interesting features. So when it comes to the mysterious incidents surrounding Randy, the biggest mystery of all was what made him so angry on that night in particular. On this specific night, what the workers found left them shocked and stunned. Unfortunately, there was no security camera footage of what happened that night. Like all the other incidents we've covered so far, what happened to Randy took place over the month that the pizzeria was being fumigated. So just like all the other animatronics at the pizzeria, Randy was quite confused as to why there hasn't been any visitors for a few weeks now. All around the pizzeria was a thick green fog that just hung in the air. No laughing children, no jolly birthday songs, just silence. As the days dragged on, Randy began to grow mad. Eventually they got so angry, they totally destroyed the ice cream machine. Randy kicked and clawed at them until they were operational no more. Without knowing it, he did a number on his body as well. The material from his hands and feet were all ripped, and he even managed to rip his favourite cowboy hat. As Randy thought back on who could have caused all of this to begin with, they remembered seeing the night guards spraying the poison all around the pizzeria. It was them. They were the reason no one was here anymore. Randy harboured so much hatred towards the night guard. Eventually, if they ever came back, he would make them pay. So Randy's starting position would always be at the Desert Dessert Bar. He would be one of the characters that starts moving straight away. The player would have to keep an eye on them through the cameras and use the motion tracker to track their movements as they get closer. Randy would be able to approach from both the left and right door. As soon as the player sees them, they would need to shut the door immediately. The player would also know that Randy is nearby by the sound of his rattle. All the player needs to do is keep vigilant and try and track his movements. But the real trouble would be when the player nods off and finds himself in the Nightmare Realm. It's in this strange place that they'll meet the Nightmare version of Randy. The Nightmare version of Randy can be seen with sharp jagged teeth and many overgrown fangs protruding from their mouth. This version of Randy also doesn't have their eyeballs attached. All that remains is their small infrared lenses. These small lenses would be highly susceptible to light. Since the doors don't work in the Nightmare Realm, the characters can just walk right in. When this happens, the player would need to use the supercharged flashlight to fend Randy off. The intense burst of light would fry his senses and send him away. The player needs to keep an eye on the Nightmare Randy and make sure to blind him with the flashlight because if they don't, they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And this charming little character is known as the Cactus Kid. So Cactus Kid was designed to be a smaller character, and was modelled after the typical Midwestern cactus. The engineers decided not to give him spikes. Even though these spikes would have been soft rubber, they thought the Cactus Kid would be more approachable and huggable if they weren't covered in multiple spikes. So the Cactus Kid's role at the pizzeria is candy dispensing. So Cactus Kid would be filled with candy and they would dispense pieces out of his mouth when you pull down on the lever on his head. The Cactus Kid was considered to be quite the helpful animatronic. Not only were they programmed to dispense candy and keep all the kids entertained, but they were also programmed to sweep and keep the place neat and tidy. So when it came to the month-long fumigation of the pizzeria, the Cactus Kid was the only animatronic that was left on during this time. So throughout the month he was tasked with cleaning up and tidying, and making sure all the animatronics were in tip-top shape. He would walk around and give each and every one of them a quick clean. But of course, that all changed when his friends got a little more scary looking. 
But regardless, our little cactus kid came out of that month pretty much the same. They were still their happy self regardless of all the strange and weird things that were going on. So all the guests and workers have tried at least one of his candies. But the only person who hasn't was the night guard. On multiple occasions, Cactus Kid has always offered candies to the night guard, but they would always politely decline. They didn't have much of a sweet tooth. But the Cactus Kid just couldn't understand why they wouldn't take one. The idea of someone not eating their candy and being happy made him very upset. They were determined to make them try at least one candy. So one evening, while the night guard was working on their night shift, the Cactus Kid decided to sneak up to the office and greet them. He offered the night guard the candy and they finally took it. After months of trying to offer them a sweet treat, they had finally gave in and accepted the nice gesture. Cactus Kid was so excited that they had finally accepted a piece of candy. The night guard shooed Cactus Kid away as they needed to continue their work. Excitedly, he peered through the glass and waited for them to eat it. But the night guard did the exact opposite. Instead of unwrapping and eating the sweet treat, they tossed it into the trash can. The Cactus Kid stared heartbroken as they did it. Enough was enough. They were going to make the Night Guard eat a piece of candy one way or another, even if they had to force them to. So the Cactus Kid's starting position would always be the main party area. He didn't have a specific movement time. He would make his first move at any time or not move at all. Cactus Kid would only approach the office from the right hand air vent. Whenever the player hears movement in the vents, that's when they would need to quickly check and see if Cactus Kid was there. The way in which the player needs to deal with him is quite simple. They just need to stare at Cactus Kid for a couple of seconds and not break eye contact. Eventually he'll slink away back into the vent and try again another time. The player would need to stay on high alert and keep an eye out for Cactus Kid. If they forget to check, they'll get greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. <laughs> So the new character we're introducing is Arnie the Armadillo. So, hence the name, Arnie was designed after the desert dwelling animal, the Armadillo. Arnie was one of the bulkiest characters at the Desert Diner Pizzeria. His body was made up of multiple layered plates and has a large armored shell on his back. The multiple layered plates on his body could be opened up for easy access for repairs but they could be problematic sometimes due to them popping open by themselves from time to time. So Arnie didn't have a spot up on stage. He was instead located upstairs in the arcade. This arcade was called Arnie's Arcade. It was filled with plenty of games, machines and prizes to win. So overall, the pizzeria considered Arnie to be quite the successful animatronic. They did their job as instructed and kept all the guests happy and entertained. A strange and dark presence would get underneath his skin, and refuse to leave. Inside of Arnie was where they would call their new home. But before we explore this dark moment in the Desert Diner's history, let's first take a look at the events leading up to it. So Arnie's arcade was due for a new arcade machine. The pizzeria has been waiting for this machine for quite some time now, but the day had finally come when the Faz Blaster 3000 machine would arrive. But unknown to Arnie, something dark and sinister was lurking inside the machine. No one knows exactly what happened to Arnie over this time period. But he wasn't the same after. It seems that something had changed drastically about him, not just on the outside, but internally as well. So when the pizzeria reopened, Arnie wasn't the same. Whatever resided inside of his body seemed to control him. But these twisted little entities wanted something far greater. They grew tired of Arnie's body. They desired something new, something different. So those disturbing little critters would control Arnie and make their way down to the security office. Then they would seize their chance to take over the night guard's body once and for all. His starting position would always be in the arcade. He would start to move around 3 or 4 a.m. Typically Arnie would move once the player has dealt with a number of all the other characters already. So Arnie would approach from the left hand side. As soon as the player sees him, they would need to shut the door immediately. If the player sees Arnie with an open chest cavity, then they would need to be on high alert. 
This would mean those mysterious little critters have exited his body and were coming after the player. But since these little critters moved in the shadows, a burst of light from the player's flashlight would fend them off. So if the player sees those red little eyes peering out at them, they would need to use their flashlight immediately. With these multiple attempts to enter the security office, the player must be on high alert at all times. If they get overwhelmed and slip up, they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. Let's start off with meeting our next character. And this character is Victor the Vulture. So hence the name, Victor was designed after the desert dwelling bird, the Vulture. He was given a dark grey colour scheme, with the famous chest feathers and a long neck and beak. So Victor didn't have a spot up on stage with the main band. He instead spent most of his time in the main dining area. While all the guests ate their pizza, from time to time Victor would come out of his hiding area. Menacing music would play as he walked around and tried to steal their food. Because vultures were known to be scavengers, Victor's whole gag was that he was after all the guests left over pizza. Whenever he approached a table, all the guests would have to yell, Scram Victor, go away. Then Victor would walk over to the next table and try to take the leftover pizza. This segment always ended with Cory the camel taking care of the nasty old Victor, so the guests could eat in peace. The lunchtime show always proved to be a hit with the guests. Victor didn't mind that at all. He knew it was all just an act. He was only happy as long as he got his share of the scraps when the day had ended. Not many of the staff knew about this, but after hours, Victor would rummage through the trash. He would help himself to all the half-eaten pizza and leftover fries. So over this month-long period, things got a little strange for Victor. Every day he would walk out to the main dining area and pretend to steal all the guests' food. But day after day, no one was there. No menacing music, no one booing him, just nothing. The only thing he could see was that thick green poisonous cloud hovering over the floor. Every night Victor would go without his scraps. This began to drive Victor mad. They loved their scraps. Their beak was made for picking at things. If he didn't have things to pick at, then what did he have at all? They needed to pick something apart. They needed scraps. So if there wasn't anything around, he would do the unthinkable. Victor decided to pick himself apart. He picked as much material off his neck as he could, and most of the material from his arms was picked away as well. After walking around, he found himself in the sand room. And laying there right before him was Corey. Victor took a second to think, then he made his decision. When the night guard returned back to work, Victor had his eye on them. They looked much more delicious than any of the scrap they could think of. So when the time was right, Victor would make his move. Victor's starting position would always be in the main dining area. Victor's attempts to enter the office would come from the right hand side door and they would happen quite frequently. The player would need to be extra careful when they see the red lights. This would mean that Victor would appear from either side of the office and give the player no time to close the door. This specific attack would be quite similar to Foxy's classic attack where he would charge down the hallway and charge to the office. The player needs to keep on their toes and predict where Victor will be charging in from. Because if they don't, they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And for the last character we have, Fiona the Fennec Fox. Fiona was designed after the adorable desert animal, the Fennec Fox. One of the most notable features of the Fennec Fox are their large oversized ears and fluffy tail. So Fiona's role at the pizzeria was that of the daycare attendant. So the Desert Diner Pizzeria had its own daycare center upstairs at the end of the arcade. This part of the pizzeria was known as the Desert Daycare. This is where the guests could leave their younger children whilst they relaxed downstairs and enjoyed their food. Fiona was the one who was in charge of the daycare. She would take care and look after all the young children throughout the day. She wouldn't know what she'd do if she didn't have her children to look after and take care of. 
And that's why, out of all the animatronics, Fiona took the month-long isolation the hardest. As the pizzeria shut its doors due to its pest problem, all the animatronics suffered their very own breakdowns and incidents due to the lack of guests for them to entertain. But when it came to Fiona, she missed all of her children that she would look after day after day. She waited for them to return, but none of them ever came back. Week after week, Fiona started to change. Fiona would never leave the daycare center. Even after the pizzeria reopened, Fiona was locked away within the desert daycare. No one knew why the manager chose to board up this area. One thing was for sure, the night guard was quite curious about what could be behind the daycare door. Before their shift started, they pried open the door and took a look inside. And to their surprise, there was nothing. Nothing at all. Maybe the manager was telling the truth. So now the night guard heads back to the security office to start their shift. But little do they know, they have unleashed something that was eager to get out. So Fiona's starting position would always be inside the desert daycare. She would start moving at around 3 to 4 a.m. Fiona would be very elusive and just be out of frame as she sneaks down to the office. So Fiona would approach the right hand door. As soon as the player sees her, they would need to close the door immediately. When they open the door back up again, they would need to be sure that she was still not there. Sometimes Fiona will jump up onto the ceiling and hide as well. But if the player has already used the EMP on a previous night, then they would have to try and survive on their own. And if they get overwhelmed and don't act in time, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps out a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. As always, let us know in the comment section down below what was your favourite part of the Desert Diner Pizzeria, and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well to the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.